St John's Orphanage. Local journalist and historian Howard Jones has published numerous articles and several books investigating the history of St John's Orphanage. The orphanage at Thaguna was operated by the Sisters of Mercy from 1992 until 1978. Apart from taking orphan girls and others from broken homes, it also provided a day school for local Catholic children and the chapel attached to the orphanage was a place of worship for people who do not wish to travel to the Catholic Church in Aubrey. St John's was created in the strict discipline tradition of the Irish Catholic orphanages. The church saw institutional care as a way of raising orphans or abandoned children as Catholics. The New South Wales Public Charities Commission of 1973-4 opposed institutional life for children, having found appalling conditions in children's homes. The colonial government favoured fostering or boarding out children to families and legislated accordingly in 1881. The church persisted with its orphanages but received no state aid for them. Bishop Lanigan opened the orphanage on April 16, 1882, when three sisters were in residence. Father Patrick Dunn urged parents to send their children as day pupils. Destitute girls were admitted to the orphanage as a priest's recommendation or they could be nominated by charitable subscribers of over £10. By Christmas, 32 girls were in residence. Sister Zeta, Florence Gilbert, was assigned to the orphanage in 1992, aged 21. For two years, she cooked for about 77 girls and was able to draw on the vegetable garden and orchard and dairy. Local farmers killed stock when required or donated injured stock. Other people gave vegetables, butter, eggs, cakes and lollies. Sick Brothers Bakery gave six loaves a week. Sister Zita said in 1982 that she had been upset at the time and the memory still upset her 60 years later as the children were helpless and with no one to fall back on. We had whole families of them sometimes, even of five children, and we didn't really have the means to do all we would have liked to have done for them. It doesn't matter how good you are, it is impossible to take the place of a parent. You can do everything in your power, but it takes the real parent to give children the comfort and help they need at that age. Bread was baked at the orphanage every morning, the girls kneading the dough the night before. Sister Zita recalled the dependence on charity for extras and winter clothes. Cast off clothes were altered to winter clothes. The girls rose at 6am summer and winter and did chores before prayers, breakfast and school. Water for baths and washing clothes had to be heated on the kitchen stoves or open fires, Sister Zita recalled. The laundry was done outdoors in big wooden tums with washboards and on wash days the clothes were hung out on the fence to dry. A child's view of the early 1920s has come from Kathleen Beattie who writes, My mother, Mary Veronica McGrath, born in 1950, was placed in St John's when she was seven. Her mother, Esther, had died as a result of an operation on her thyroid. As her father, Jack, had six children, he decided to out three girls in the orphanage. One girl was cared for by her great aunt and uncle until she was five before being placed in the orphanage as well. Jack kept the boys at home with him. It must have come as a dreadful shock to be dropped off with a bag of clothes, then watch their father drive away in his horse and buggy. They were being separated from their brothers as well as their little sister. In his book Orphanage Survivors, Howard Jones exposed the deception of British children and their families, and the general public, by the church in the 1950s. A cruel deception brought 22 girl migrants to St John's Orphanage in 1950. Some stayed 12 years, most never saw their mothers again. A few waited half a century to be reunited with their family members. Girls were told wrongly that their parents were dead. In England, mothers couldn't find out what really happened to their daughters in Australia. Maybe that's just as well. A sister caring for the girls told them their mothers had thrown them in the gutter. Catholic migration officials hatched a plan specifically for St John's in 1948 and won British government approval for it to be used, despite misgivings in London. In 1949, they picked out girls aged 4 to 15 from different orphanages. The migrant ship Asturias left Southampton on February 8, 1950. Mary Mollahan had her 10th birthday on the boat. I was told I was going to Australia. When we saw doctors and were given new clothes, but when I got to Southampton and I realised we were going, I tried to get off the boat. All the migrant girls became legal guardians of the immigration minister until they reached 21. It must be recorded that five or so sisters who accepted the girls at St John's were not to blame for their arrival. 
Though their orders was to complicit in the migration scheme, Mother Gertrude and her colleagues had to make the best job of bringing up the new girls, who were victims of decisions made by men far away from Thuguna. Catholic priests, politicians and public servants between them determined that girls were to be torn away from their mother country and sent to Australia. They considered that children of good stock and of the British race were essential to maintain a white Australia. In 1956, the orphanage was caring for more than 100 orphans and children from broken homes, and the foundation stone of the new school was laid. The new school cost more than £10,000 and was in use early in 1957. The last building work at the orphanage was the new chapel, opened in 1961. Changes in the way of caring for orphans led to the closure of the orphanage in 1978. The buildings were repurposed as a home for intellectually disabled men, known as Guadalupe House. Bishop Francis Carroll allocated the site to the Mother of Good Brothers in 1978, soon after the orphanage closed, and for 20 years the extensive grounds were used to grow food and graze animals. In 1997, Bishop William Brennan caused a storm in the Thaguna community by directing the sale of much of the grounds for private housing. Pope John Paul II was asked to intervene, but the sale went ahead and homes were built as Dun Crescent. Guadalupe House cared for up to 24 men. Some men lived in there for the entire 30 years the centre operated. It closed in 2010. In November 2011, ABC radio reporter Gay Patterson covered the opening of another chapter for the orphanage buildings. The building was officially reopened and renamed as Anne's House in honour of Sister Ignatius, Frances Anne Murphy, who preferred to be known as Anne at a community celebration. For the Sisters of Mercy, it is a full circle, with the organisation establishing the orphanage in 1882 and operating it up until 1978, when the Mother of God Brothers moved in and established a community for intellectually disabled men. The Mercy Centre, which was also a disability organisation, repurchased Guadalupe House in 2010 from the Diocese of Wagga and began restoring it to its former glory. CEO of the Mercy Centre, Sister Patricia Weeks, says Anne's house has been transformed into an inviting space and is no longer the foreboding place it may have seemed. That reading by Kate Johnston and Nick Robinson. Sources. Jones, Howard C., Orphanage Survivors, A True Story of St. John's Thaguna. Jones, Howard C., 1985, A History of Thaguna. Patterson G., 2011, Mercy for Albury's Orphanage, ABC, Goulburn Murray. And Jones, H., 2008, Church to Close Guadalupe House, Have Your Say. Mm-hmm.